welcome back to Story Hustler, Murder Mayhem, PTSD. I'm Dylan. And I'm Mike. And we're going to talk about when you covered 9-11. 9-11, coming up on the 20th anniversary yep. of that uh, terrible and history-altering day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you remember this? You were like one year I old. I do not remember this. I know Colt remembers this and talks about this, but I was one approaching two. But he was old enough to... Yeah, I did not have any recollection of this at all it's interesting now yeah it's for people your age and younger it is history yeah you know it's crazy but i don't think we've ever asked you about you know when you covered it and what that was like the week after being there right we got uh yeah we i was working with the great jim cox and we got the first flight out of phoenix that we could get on uh, a yeah. couple of days after the attack and and then spent uh, a week or a little more than a week there covering the fallout in Manhattan and uh, uh, one of those kind of moments that uh, you could feel the, the weight of history sort of in everything that was going on that just the world was suddenly a different place and you had that that sense early. We got a flight there, and uh, and I think it, we stopped in Chicago on the way, and we loaded up with a bunch of Chicago firefighters. Who guess what? We're getting on the first plane they could get on, to so help. they could go help their uh, brothers and sisters go through the rubble at uh, Ground Zero and looking for firefighters and other victims. All hands and, on deck. Yeah, it was all hands on deck, and I know that the Phoenix Fire, uh, while we were there, a big contingent of the Phoenix firefighters showed up, and we did a couple of stories with uh, they have one of the uh, the premier sort of uh, urban search and rescue crews, and so they were hand in hand in that. So uh, from the earliest moments, it was the aftermath, all hands on deck, as you say, where we were, uh, you know, the, the, the nation was responding, and that's what we felt like we, we were going there to tell this story that needed to, you know, people wanted to hear about, and I certainly wanted to be part of and, and to be close to. And, uh, and you know, we're with firefighters going in, and then as soon as we get there, uh, you know, you're sort of immersed in a city that had just basically taken a shot right in the torso. Yeah, but, right through the heart. Well, and, but... Yeah, the, but that sounds fatal and and obviously the uh, no, horrible death count back, but that but city the city that never sleeps had that vitality even then when it had been kicked in the teeth and that's that was amazing to me that the resilience of new yorkers right and i remember the first night we went down and uh, we were in washington square and some of the areas down in the lower lower manhattan and there were already on on just on every surface there were uh, pictures and photographs of people that were missing and in those early days you know and then people playing guitars and lighting candles and and, and, and as quiet as you know you'd be in these in these areas that were usually bustling and there was still lots of life in the streets but it was almost silent you know in those in those first nights uh and and then it became a story of covering uh you know uh, i remember being there uh with a young uh Red Cross uh, official from Phoenix who was or- had been brought in uh, to help uh, coordinate things. And there were all those f- little Phoenix touches that, of course, I was covering uh, for our audience here as uh, as the drama unfolded there. But the Arizona links, and uh, you know, uh, there was a period of time where we were running around and following Hillary Clinton when she was still a senator. From New York, and uh, a guy named Paul Wellstone, who was a well-known senator from Minnesota, killed in a plane crash in Selsom just shortly after this. But famous, uh, famous politicians, John Kyle, the Arizona senator, was there. A contingent of senators had come down to see this, and we traveled with them for a little bit as they were uh, they were looking at the site. But uh, working with Jimmy uh, and trying to get a sense for what had happened to the city and how the city was responding, you know, Jim was a tough guy, but uh, and we had a sort of a raucous relationship. But uh, after a couple of nights there, uh, 
I remember uh, just sort of, I think both of us were over exhausted and overwhelmed. And uh, the next thing I know, we're sort of sopping in each other's arms just to, yeah. let, it, just to let it out. Wow. And, uh, you know, that was the kind of trip it was. But uh, did, I did think did some remarkable journalism, covered some interesting stories. And, and as I've told you many times, I think the thing that's, that is the great salvation for somebody like me or somebody who, who is sort of programmed to, to run into the flames or run to tell the stories is you're not just covering the horrible event itself, uh, but you're covering the human response, the yeah. aftermath. And that's what sustains you and pulls you through. And that's certainly what pulled us through, I think, covering 9-11. But, you know, uh, and uh, it's now sort of uh, made its way into history and people interpret it or, uh, you know, look at it as they will. But there was that moment in time when the nation was profoundly wounded. And going and covering those stories, the nation stepped up and said, let's get busy and start cleaning this up. And that was, you know, it was, it was an amazing, it was an amazing trip. One of those moments that you really saw Americans unite. Uh, yeah, the best for sure. The best. Uh, yeah, so the you know you see the worst in people and the best in people in moments like that, and uh, and the response and New York's response. I, I still love the city. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, seeing some guy down down uh, in Times Square as we were leaving, and he was I think a street musician. And I said, "Do you love this city?" And he said, "Not only do I love this city, this city loves me." And you know that was that. If you have that kind of relationship with your hometown, and you got people like that, you're gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah definitely. Wow, it was a uh, you know interesting time in American history. And I, we should we'll probably talk. We should talk more about that as we get closer to the definitely. 20th anniversary. But you know that was my insight. We just uh, did, did hell bent to get on an airplane and go be this, the biggest story of my lifetime. Uh, yeah. Certainly at the time and. Uh, I could, you know, I, I guess you could argue it was one of the biggest stories. Yeah, I think it was probably the biggest story you've ever covered. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Very interesting. All righty. But, um, that's it from us. I yeah. Guess. You know, this is Story Hustler. Like and subscribe. Murder mayhem. PTSD. You like what you hear. Yeah. I mean, no one likes what they hear when we talk about 911. So, but more phrasing. Sorry. Interesting stories. Good night. Good night, everybody. So long from the patio. Bye.